How we doing class? Uncle Jegs here. I know it's been a while. We're going to be going through some organic chemistry. So we're starting with the introduction to benzene. So you should know what to do. We've got the retrieval grid here. Pause the video, see if you can answer these questions, alright? Catalysts lower the activation energy by providing an alternative pathway. What does disproportionation mean? It's when an element is oxidized and reduced in the same reaction. What is the bond angle of a trigonal planar molecule? You should know that's 120 degrees. All right, so why are we learning this lesson, Introduction to Benzene? Well, benzene is pretty important in nature. What I'll also like you to do now is pause the video, look at what we've got on the screen. I've got some writing frames for you on the bottom left and bottom right. See if you can write something substantial here. Well, we can see that thymol, which is actually one of the ingredients in thyme, incorporates a benzene ring. And that's the same with almonds as well. We've got benzaldehyde, which is also found in almonds. We'll be going through these specification references all right, so aromatic compounds or airings have one or more benzene ring. With the person next to you, or if you're working by yourself, try and think, where have you heard this word aromatic before? Well, aromatic things usually is aromatic, it smells, it's, it's got to do with smells, so... I've got some challenge questions here, of course. The first one's asking you to draw this benzene structure and then the next one's asking you to draw the skeletal structure of this benzene. So pause the video and have a go at that, okay? All right, so the skeletal structure, because obviously we've got the drawing here. This looks like this. Remember, with the skeletal structure, each kink represents a carbon. And we don't show the hydrogens because most organic compounds are hydrocarbons. So to just save time, we don't draw the carbons. We just have a kink and we don't draw the hydrogens. We assume there's a hydrogen there. And benzene is actually the simplest airing that you can have. And here's some notes that you should take down about it. This is its structure. It's C6H6. It's colourless, highly flammable, and, and it's a liquid form in te room temperature and pressure, and it's very sweet smelling as well. However, this model of benzene is actually outdated. We have the Kirkule model, which is what we have here. And this is the model of benzene with alternating single and double bonds between the carbon bonds. And it was invented by this guy that had a dream about an Ouroboros, which is a snake that eats his own tail. I don't know what kind of crazy dream he was having. I've got two substances here. Substance A, which is hexene and bromine. Substance B, which is benzene and bromine. Think about the structure of the Kirkule model. Pause the video and what is the problem with this demonstration here? Well, you should remember that bromine water is decolorized when we have a carbon-carbon double bond. And that's why hexene is actually decolorizing that bromine water. However, that's not happening with the benzene. So if benzene had carbon-carbon double bonds, the bromine should be decolorized and by the mechanism of electrophilic addition. So this was one of the first issues that we found with benzene that there's something wrong with this structure. Now I've got the Kirkulean model of benzene at the top. I've got some bond lengths at the bottom table there. You already know what's coming up. We've got those challenge questions. Pause the video, have a go at these challenge questions and then we'll go through the answers, all right?
Well, pretty straightforward. We just look at which number is the lowest and that is the carbon hydrogen bond. If the bond is very short, so that means that the atoms are very close together, that tells us that it's actually a very strong bond. It's hard to break. It's hard to pull those two atoms away from each other. X-ray diffraction in 1929 showed that all the carbon-carbon bonds in benzene are actually 0.139 nanometers. What does this suggest for two marks? Well, there's only one type of bond. That means there's only one type of bond in the benzene ring. And that bond is in between the lengths of a single carbon-carbon bond and a double bond carbon carbon bond because we can see the single and carbon bond it's kind of in between the two lengths this is another issue that we had we see that the bonds between benzene don't marry up with the model the Kerkeley model again so the bromine water doesn't decolorize now we see that there's only one type of bond between the carbons in benzene more things are stacking up now we're going to the hydrogenation enthalpy. This is the enthalpy change during catalytic hydrogenation. So let's first look at cyclohexene. We've got cyclohexene and we had hydrogen to it. So the hydrogen breaks that double bond and attaches to the carbons, the corresponding carbons, and it creates cyclohexane. Remember, hexenes are alkenes with double bonds. Have a go at this challenge question. Pause the video. Well, if the hydrogenation of cyclohexene is minus 120 kilojoules per mole, predict the hydrogenation of benzene. And we saw that in that Kerkeleyer model that we actually had three double bonds. So that, that means we have to times that by three to give us an enthalpy change of minus 360 kilojoules per mole. But you already know something fishy is going on. The actual number is minus... 208 kilojoules per mole. Have a think. Does this mean that the benzene is more or is less stable? So here I've got an enthalpy diagram with two locations at the moment. I've got location A and location B. And I've also got location C there. And we've got from location A to location B, the enthalpy released is minus 360 kilojoules per mole. That's your theoretical value. Then from location C to location B, that's minus 280 kilojoules per mole. This is the actual value. From location A to location C, that's minus 152 kilojoules per mole. That's your delocalization energy. What I'd like you to do now, I know this is looking like the craziest nonsense at the moment, Draw this enthalpy diagram, but instead of putting A, B, and C, draw the model of benzene that actually goes where. So we've got benzene and we've got cyclohexane, and we've got two different models for benzene. You should be able to use deductive reasoning to draw the correct model in the correct location. So pause the video, spend some time trying to do that. In the last activity, we saw that, to, theoretically, to go from the Kerkeleyer model of benzene to cyclohexane, we should have released minus 360 kilojoules per mole. So we've got the Kerkeleyer model at the top there, and we've got cyclohexane at the bottom. But then this other model that has the circle in the middle, that's probably the actual model for benzene. So hopefully you were able to work that out. So let's summarize the issues with the Kerkeleyer model. First thing, benzene does not react via electrophilic addition. So it doesn't undergo the mechanism that will allow it to, to decolorize bromine water. The lengths of the carbon-carbon bonds are equal. Remember that x-ray diffraction that showed that the lengths of the bonds between each carbon in benzene is equal. There's only one type of bond there, not alternating double and single bonds. And finally, the hydrogenation enthalpy is lower than expected. 
we can see that we expect it to be minus 360 kilojoules per mole, but it's actually minus 280 kilojoules per mole. So if you're revising in pairs, or if you're doing this by yourself, have a go at identifying the different orbitals that we have here. So one, of course, was the s orbital, two was p, and three was the d orbital. Okay, so we've got an element here. Have a go at these challenge questions now. So how many valence ele electrons does carbon have? It has four outer shell electrons, four valent electrons. The more challenge, which orbitals are they found in? And this is two marks because you've got two electrons that occupy the 2s orbital and two electrons that occupy the 2p orbital. And for the mega challenge, it's asking you to write down the electronic configuration for carbon. And we've got 1s2, 2s2, and 2p two. If you have issues with this, don't worry, I'm going to do a video going over electronic configuration again. So let's look at this delocalized model of benzene. Each carbon uses three electrons, two bonded to the opposite carbons and one bonded to a hydrogen. So if we focus on one of the carbons, like this carbon over here, it is bonded to two opposite carbons and also one hydrogen. Now have a look here. I'm showing the p orbital, which is the um, highest energy orbital in carbon. And the p orbitals are at right angles to the actual plane of the structure. And what happens is that the six p orbitals, remember you've got six carbons there, each one has the p orbitals where you find those last two electrons. The six p orbitals overlap turning your p orbital into pi bonds. And pi bonds, you can kind of think of it like a donut, uh, two donut structures, one on the top, one on the bottom. The p orbitals have overlapped, creating these pi bonds. And this forms a stable structure. De this delocalized structure of electrons, almost like Remember, delocal means that their electrons don't stay in one local area. They're moving around. They delocalized. Because of this delocalized structure, the structure of benzene is actually more stable than what we would expect if it was alternating single and double bonds. This is what explains the structure, the stable structure and the properties of benzene. So it doesn't undergo electrophilic addition. What I'd like you to do now, just have a guess at naming these aromatic compounds. This first one, remember each kink is a carbon. We've got two kinks here. So that's an ethyl group and it's attached to benzene. So of course we're gonna call it ethyl benzene. Here, the group that we've got on here is a uh, chlorine. So chloral, so this is going to be chloral benzene. And here we've got a nitro group. So we're going to call this one nitro benzene. And this is for when you've got one substituent group. The parent group is usually benzene if you've only got one substitute and group. Usually, there are always exceptions. If there are two or more substitutants, you give the lowest possible numbers alphabetically. What does that mean? So let's see here. Here we've got two methyl groups. Remember, there's only one kink there. Well, it's not even a kink, but it's a point. So we're going to assume that's a carbon. So we've got one carbon there and another carbon there. And we've obviously assumed that they've got the maximum amount of hydrogens around them. So three hydrogens. So that's a methyl group. So let me use this one as my one position. So we've got one, two, three. So that's one, three, methyl benzene. But we don't just say methyl benzene. Because we've got two methyl groups, we have to say di, just like carbon dioxide has two oxygens or trioxide has three oxygens. 
So we've got one free dimethyl benzene, all right? Now this one, we've got a methyl group and we've got a chloral group. Chloral comes before meth, C comes before M. So we're gonna have free chloral methyl benzene. Here, we wanna have the lowest number possible and we also want it alphabetical order. So we've got a nitro and we've got a methyl. M comes before N, I had to think about that for a second. Our nitro will be in position one, but we have to pick which nitro will be in position one. It wouldn't make no sense for us to pick this nitro group as position one, because that's not gonna give us the lowest number possible. If we pick either of the nitro group next to the methyl, so let me pick this nitro group on the left hand side, our methyl will be position two. If I pick the nitro on the right hand side, the methyl will still be position two. Because remember, these molecules aren't just jamming in one, one plane like that, they're moving around like mad. So I'm going to pick this one on the left. So that's position one. That means my methyl group is in position two. So I've got, and putting that in alphabetical order, so that's two methyl. So we've got one nitro in position one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So we've got one, three, five. And we've got three nitros. So that's tri nitro. Let's put all of that together now. So it's two methyl, one, three, five, tri nitro benzene. It's not as hard as it seems. It, the more examples you have, the easier it becomes. But of course, there are some exceptions that you have to memorize. I'm sorry about that. It's only three anyway. So we've got this one here. The name is benzoic acid, okay? We've got a carboxylic group attached directly to the benzene ring, benzoic acid. And if you're wondering why am I using the Kirkulea model, you can get away with drawing this. I couldn't find any pictures showing the circle. When we have an amine group, the amine group takes priority. And so when your benzene is actually the substituent, it turns from benzene to phenyl. So this is actually phenylamine. And then here we've got an aldehyde. And we can tell it's an aldehyde because it's a carbonyl group, but there's a hydrogen bonded on the other side of it. And we call this benzaldehyde. All right. So memorize these three exceptions when you've only got one substituent. The benzene is the substituent if the benzene is attached to an alkyl chain with a functional group. So here we've got an alkyl chain with a functional group. We've got a carbonyl group there. And this is a ketone because we've got a carbon and a carbon on the opposite sides. And since there's two carbons, one with the carbonyl and another one on the end, that's a ethanone. So remember when the benzene ring is a substituent, we use the word phenol. So putting all that together, that's phenol ethanone. Remember, we use the own suffix when it's a ketone. Again, benzene is the substituent if the benzene is attached to the alkyl group with seven or more carbon atoms. I rarely see this in the exam in the past papers, but it, it is in the syllabus, so make sure you know this. So if the alkyl group has seven or more carbons, then the phenol will be used, the phenol name. So let's actually, you know what? You do this yourself. Pause the video and see if you can name this together. Okay, so let's count this carbon chain. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's an octane. And the uh, phenol is attached to position. Remember, we use the lowest position. So we're not using position seven. We're gonna use this as position one. So two, so we've got two phenol octane, okay? All right. So have a go at naming this compound.
well, the base is methyl benzene. And that's going to be where we start numbering from. So that's position one. And using the lowest number, so the bromine is in position two. So we have two bromo methyl benzene. How about this one? The base is benzene. Using the lowest number, it doesn't really matter for this combination. It's 1,4-dichlorobenzene. How about this one? Base is methyl benzene again, but if we put it in alphabetical order, it will still be benzene. Using the lowest number combination, this is going to be free chloromethyl benzene. Anytime when you've got methyl and you've got another substitute and that's a halogen, you're going to have me you're going to have the ending as methyl benzene. How about this compound? Hopefully you remember that when you've got an amine, the base will be phenylamine. Use the lowest number combination. We've got free bromophenylamine. Have a go at this one. The base is benzoic acid. Again, that'll give us free bromobenzoic acid if we use the lowest number combination. What about this one? The base would be nitro benzene when we put all of that in alphabetical order. Using the lowest number combination, so it makes sense to start from this nitro group. So we have 3 methyl 1 2 dinitro benzene. Now let's do the opposite. Draw this structure here 1 2 4 tribromal benzene. So let's first draw our benzene structure. We've got one, two, four. And it doesn't matter where you start from, but as long as the space in between them makes sense. So we've got one, two, and then four all over there. Again, we can rotate this molecule. It doesn't make any difference. What about this structure? So we draw our benzene ring and we have a one free position and they're both nitro groups. So we've got one free dinitro benzene. What about this one? So we can start the base straight with benzoic acid. And that's the one position. We've got two, three, so there need to be one on position two, one on position three. And it doesn't matter which side you start on. I did mine on the right hand side. So we've got two, three, dichloral benzoic acid. Can you draw this one? So starting with the benzene, we we'll need to add one chloro. So chloro is in the one position and then 3, 4, dibromo, so 3, 4 position for the bromines. All right, what about this one? So propanone, if I draw it as a skeletal structure, looks like that. We've got the free kinkster, and I'll just attach that to the benzene ring. And this is phenyl propanone. Because remember, when you've got the alkyl group that has a functional group, that takes the base name. What about this? Okay. So we'll start with benzoic acid again. That's our one position. So we just have to go to a four position. So we've got four hydroxy benzoic acid. And what about this one here?
So this is what the benzaldehyde would look like. And then we need the bromine in the free position. And what about this structure here? So here I've got propanol. So we've got one, two, three. That means that we have to attach the phenol onto that carbon there. Now, what about this one here? Phenol ethanoate. Ethanoate, that's an ester. So try and remember what that would look like as a skeletal structure. So this the ethanoate, we've got one, two carbons, and then the ester. Well, it's not an ester yet because I haven't attached the carbon to the other side. That carbon is going to be a carbon on the benzene ring. All right, so now we're at the checklist. So tick the boxes that you are able to do. If you're unsure of any of those, go back, rewatch the video, and then go back to your checklist. Anyway, take care. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.